Hey guys, so today I have a fall decor that I've been loving in my home and I'm here to share it with you guys. Don't forget to check the description box below because in it I will have some of the products that I used. All right, here we go. Hey guys, and welcome to my channel where we do DIY projects, crafts, and some organization, but all on a budget. Let's see what we have today. Before I did anything else, I went ahead and plugged in my glue gun so it could warm up. Now what I'm going to do is just take and I'm going to glue the greenery around this base, little by little. You'll want to for sure hold the first piece that you put on in place for just a little bit. Because of the wire in the greenery, it's a little bit stiffer and it can pull off easier if it's not really adhered to that glue. I didn't want one solid line of hot glue, so I just put little portions of hot glue around and I pressed it in. As I did that the whole way around, I did two layers on the bottom before starting the next part. This part was a little harder. I took the greenery and I weaved it in and out from behind each of the little slats in the candle holder. After weaving it back and forth, the candle holder was done. You just need to add a candle. I used one that was flameless just because of adding the greenery on the inside as well as the outside. And on to the pumpkins. So I have a piece of fabric that I have folded in half. You're going to want the fabric inside out. Then you're just going to sew down this line. If you have a sewing machine, it'll go even faster. Otherwise, you can just use a hand stitch like I'm doing here. I went ahead and went back with another hand stitch just to strengthen this area of the fabric. Once I had gone back and forth down that seam, I went ahead and tied it in a knot. I always double or triple knot it just to make sure it's safe. At this point you should have two open ends, so now you're just going to do a hand stitch down one of the ends, not both of them, just one of them. As you can see, I gave myself a little distance from the top, not a lot, but I didn't want to be right on the edge either. Here's a close up of me doing the hand stitch. I'm trying to stay as even as possible. This material has a design that I can kind of follow a little bit straighter than a lot of other materials that don't have a pattern. But I'm just trying to go as evenly as possible down, and once I'm all done, I'm going to cinch it together and tie a knot. This will be the bottom of the pumpkin. And this is what it'll look like at this point. Now, once your knots are tied, you're just going to flip the fabric so it has the outside facing the correct direction. And we're going to grab our batting and we're going to stuff it in there. You can see I'm going to stuff a lot in here and when I'm getting it in there, then I push it towards the outside so that we can reach down and still feel the inside. We should still be able to find that, that bottom middle section. Here's a little bit better view how you can see there's kind of a hole in the middle of where I still want to reach down and be able to feel the bottom of the material. I like to pack a lot of the stuffing in there and make sure that the pumpkin's going to be very full. You wouldn't have to pack it quite so full to get a good end result. You do want a good amount of batting in there though. And once again, we're going to put our hand stitching to the test. We're going to go ahead and start from the inside so that the knot ends up in the inside. And we're just going to stitch like you had seen previously all the way around the pumpkin. Once we've gotten all the way around the pumpkin, you're going to pull it tight again. Once I pull all the stitching together, I like to push the excess fabric back onto the inside of the stitching. I like to leave just a little room because we are going to be going back through that hole, so I leave a little room at the top and I tie it off there. And this will be the top of the pumpkin. For this next part, I'm going to use twine, but I also used embroidery thread and it worked just as good. I just like the twine look for a little bit more of a fall farmhousey look. For this part, you will need a little bit thicker of a needle so that the eye is big enough to get whatever material through. And I'm going to knot it at the end. Now I'm going to take the twine straight through the top of the pumpkin and I want to exit out the middle of the bottom of the pumpkin. Now 
When you're using a heavier material like the twine or a yarn, it's going to take some convincing to get that needle to come out because it's going to be a little bit thicker than what you originally were going through with the regular needle. Now I'm going to pull tight and go back up to the top of the pumpkin and I'm going to go straight down the top of the pumpkin and through the middle of the bottom again. You'll notice that some of the batting will come out. That's only because we've created a bigger opening with the thicker material we're pulling through. It doesn't end up affecting it, plus it's on the bottom, so even if you need to pull that little bit of batting out, no big. Depending on how much twine or yarn you have going through, you do have to be a little bit careful because it can get tangled up and cause a hang up. Here you can see I tried going a little too fast and it got all tangled up so I had to take it back out and untangle it so that I could go again. When I'm making the section of the pumpkin I make sure I pull down tight but then I hold it at the bottom with two fingers as I pull up and go back through the top of the pumpkin. This will make sure that it stays tighter and looks more even around the entire pumpkin. I usually go around the pumpkin pulling it tight and making sections about four or five times. This is going to give your pumpkin a more realistic feel. That way it's not going to only have a couple indents and look like a four leaf clover in the end. Once I have all the sections that I want, I just hold it tight at the bottom. I cut off some of the excess if I have too much and I'm going to go ahead and double knot it so it stays nice and secure and tight. Once you have your knot tied, you can go ahead and move those sections around a little bit if you feel like they're not quite in the right place and just kind of fluff it out and make it a little bit more how you want it. For stems, I went ahead and broke up a twig outside and I put some hot glue in the center of the top and then I just stuck the stick in and I let it dry. You'll notice after I put the hot glue in, I kind of wrap the stick a little bit in front of the glue gun and that's just picking up the extra strings of hot glue that like to tend to, to lag after you pull it off of the hot glue so that we don't have a spider web effect. And last but not least, I wanted to go ahead and add a, another little touch to to the pumpkins. So I took this burlap and I went ahead and I cut a raindrop type shape. I folded it in half and cut the raindrop top type shape because this way I could either have a thicker leaf or I could split it and have two leaves. I hadn't decided at this point which I was going to do. I decided to go with two leaves. So next I'm just going to add a little bit of hot glue to the end of my leaves and push them down next to the stem. I'm going to use my scissors to kind of secure it so that the hot glue doesn't come through the burlap material and burn me. I wanted there to be some variety amongst my pumpkins, so for this pumpkin I went ahead and I did the same thing with the cutting out of the leaf, but I left both layers of burlap together and I hot glued it on. Here you can see I didn't even end up doing leaves for all my pumpkins. And here the fall decor is set up all together. The pedestal that I'm using is from the dollar store. I had gotten it around Easter and I painted it blue. I haven't been able to find another cream colored one, but that's what I am in search for. I hope you guys enjoyed and I can't wait to see you guys next time. Bye bye!